these locations to get a better internet connection. Keezy, you've got some questions coming in from people. Yeah, Luke Thurman on Twitter asked, do you prefer batting or bowling? Um, yeah, well, obviously if it's swinging, it's going to be a lot more enjoyable <laughs> to bowl. Um, and if it's a flat wicket, you're going to want to bat on it. I was thinking throughout the winter, at time, you'd come up the order a little bit to number five, which is understandable. But also at times, you weren't bowling as much. But when the game was on the line, when it was at its flat, it's at Newlands, places like that, you were the one they turned to. I think it would be disappointing. Well, not disappointing. Be, we'd be worse off if you weren't bowling as much. Do you see a time when you just become more of a batsman or do you always want to be that all-rounder? No, I think... Um... How me and Joe have sort of, you know, we've spoken about my bowling in terms of um, how to use me a bit more, you know, sort of have a better plan. And, you know, in South Africa and New Zealand and stuff like that, um, it was to come on to try and make an impact in the game. You know, not because we've got, you know, when me and, when me and Joffre are playing, we've got, um, you know, two bowlers there who can come on and, and sort of, yeah. change the the way the game is, is flowing or the way that it's being played. Um, you know, because we've got we've got an attack where, you know, everyone can run up and, you know, sort of hang around off stump and, you know, look to sit in. But the thing that me and Joffre can do is to come on, you know, set some strange fields, bowl aggressively, bowl around the wicket, um, and just to change that up. So um, me and Joe, I've spoken about using me more in that type of role, which I do enjoy. Um, obviously, there's going to be times when I'm going to have to do something else. But, um, you know, it's, it's trying to use my bowling as more of an impact to try and change the game, which obviously I always want to do. So, so would that be more going? away from home, though, as opposed to at home with the Duke ball? Yeah, I think so. Because obviously, England, you know, the, the ball swings, the, the wickets offer a little bit more to, to bowlers who pitch the ball up. Um, and challenge the defence whereas you know wickets where you're playing away I think you're going to probably have to look to to change your tactics of bowling um, every now and again so I think that's more of a tactic when we're away and then obviously in England um, you know I, I know what I'm able to do with the ball if it's you know mm. swinging or any type of assistance there off the pitch. And Geoffrey's obviously got a huge talent. You've seen him in the IPL. You've obviously played all formats with him now. Do we in the media sometimes forget that he's still very young in international test cricket terms and have to give him a bit more leeway? Sometimes he's going to bowl 96 mile an hour, others 86, 87. But that's because he's still very young in his test career. Yeah, well, I think, to be honest, in, you know, when you come to international level, you're, you're open to criticism. And I think... It's, I think everyone forgets how young somebody is or how inexperienced somebody is as soon as they don't do well. You know, Joffre came on the back of a brilliant World Cup, came into the ashes, you know, lit it on fire. And then as soon as it didn't go well for him, people started jumping on his back. But all you've seen is success, all you've seen is him doing well. And throughout somebody's career, there's always going to be highs and lows. And um, people need to remember that regardless of the fact if you started off your career well you're going to go through a patch of, of learning and sometimes you have to learn as well as dealing with not being successful which is what Joffre had to do which I think he managed really well um, and it's the same with the new guys that we got coming to the team you know Zach Crawley, Oli Pope, Sam Curran um, especially Sam Curran and Oli Pope have obviously started off their careers really well but they're going to go through that stage and people need to remember that um, that they're learning on the job and it's not always going to be them going out getting hundreds, bowling 90 mile an hour, taking fifers or whatever it is, you know. To become a better player, you've got to go through failure and understand that and because it gives you, um, it, it adds to your experience and it's inevitable people are going to fail. Um, we're not robots. So as a senior player then, as vice captain, that someone's been through as much media scrutiny as any England cricketer probably since Ian Botham, what sort of advice... Can you give to Joffre or Ollie Pope? I suppose Joffre's the more relevant one because it was such an impact he made straight away. And then the criticism you've mentioned. What can you, how can you help him? Um, I think the, one of the big things is that 
always making sure that whoever the individual is who's under that scrutiny knows that everyone in the team has got his back and do not care about what the outside world is saying. In terms of the outside world, I mean outside of our team bubble. Um, and I just sort of go like, if people, if people are saying things like look at, like try and understand that person and think, is that person going to have an effect on your career in a positive way or a negative way? And if it's going to be none, then why are you bothered about what they're saying? Yeah. That's something that I try and do. Um, you know, you're always going to come under scrutiny. And at the end of the day, the, the biggest, um, I don't know, the, um, what I take from is what my teammates think of me, what everybody in the team thinks of me, what my family think of me. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that's the real sort of thing that I try and focus on is if they're all saying good things about me, then, you know, we're, we're in a good place. You talk about, I remember I watched that thing with Redknapp and uh, McElroy the other day and he asked him as well, Jamie Redknapp said to McElroy, did you realise straight away that you belonged at the top level? Did you realise that you belonged in international cricket as soon as you got there or at what point did you think, do you know what, I can do this? Um, I think having a bit of success very, you know, early on in, in international, in, early on in your career at the highest level helps because you can always look back and go, oh, well, I did something early on in my career, which allows you to, you know, trust yourself that you can do it at that level. Um, you know, after obviously the 2013 Ashes where, you know, it went all right for me. And then I went through a really bad patch for about a year and a half. But yeah. I could always look back to that tour and go, well, no, I can actually do it. Um, it's not, it's just getting that confidence back because, you know, when you start off well and then you go through a real bad patch, it's really hard because you're battling demons inside of yourself. But, you know, deep down, you know that, that you're good enough to, to perform at least once anyway in, at the <laughs> highest level. And then... Um, it's just getting that confidence back and, you know, it just takes a, a performance, I think, to settle everybody down and knowing that they can perform at international level. I'll take you back uh, to something you said earlier about the batting and the tempo that you had to work out in New Zealand and South Africa. You've got the two young openers now at the top of the order in Sibley and Crawley. How impressed have you been with the way they settled in and how they well, implemented what it seems Joe, yourself as vice-captain, and Chris Silver would have wanted to in the batting order? Oh, I mean... Obviously, Dom Sibley's come in and done very, very well, um, you know. And um, through an unfortunate mistake, uh, through an unfortunate sort of, uh, with Rory Burns, we'll say. Um, good first time. Uh, Zach Crawley got a, an opportunity as well. And to be fair, if you average 30 at Kent, you average 64 everywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Why did you say that, Stokes? Huh? Seriously, we're never going to hear the end of it from Kim now. Well, yeah. well, I did not know it's all the scores. He's retired and now lower. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, very impressed. And um, I think you can tell early on with, with people if they're a team player. And Dom Sibley um, knows his limitations, but he's also been made aware of what we expect what we want him to do which is to play his way and just bat long and which he's done on quite a few occasions now already but he's already looked you know like he can um, be successful and almost take over what Cookie used to do for England which is just to be boring uh, <laughs> and just bat people into the ground um, you know that's how he played in Cape Town which you know allowed us to win that game and um, Zach Crawley you just see him bat you see him train and you just like this kid's got just so much talent. He's just got everything. Um, he doesn't seem to um, be phased by much. I mean, you know, he had Rabada running up to him and bowling 90 mile an hour and he's just staring yeah. at that. You know, yeah. 21 years of age, but the future looks really good um, with our test team. And the great thing is, is that all the new, kid, all the new people are young. So just, just to be clear on the tempo and all of that, Trevor Bayliss, the former coach, gets a little bit of criticism for, for almost perhaps asking the players to go out and be gung-ho. Was that the message he was giving to the players? Or was it just to be positive in every aspect of your batting? 
Yeah. And has that changed? Yeah. I mean, as you know, Trev doesn't, Trev can't really explain too much into things what he says. <laughs> um, but yeah, his message to us was always, you know, go out and be positive. But um, a clever, a, a, a more intellectual man probably would have gone into what he meant a bit more. Um, what do you think he meant then? Well, we, we knew what he meant, but obviously the media didn't quite get it properly. And bless when he, um, when he called it a day, the, the media all got him a whiskey, um, like a hip, hip flask and just put um, sort of about, you know, be positive on it. Because they eventually got what he meant, which was <laughs> be positive in your defence, be positive in yeah. your attack. Yeah. It was his mindset, wasn't it? He was speaking. If you have a positive mindset, then yeah. you move so much better in everything, really. Yeah. I think he probably regretted saying that at the start, didn't he? Because then it just became this thing yeah. throughout the whole time, which was very unfair, actually, would you think? Yeah, well, I think, you know, he, he always just says, you know, be positive. Being positive isn't about going out and hitting fours and sixes. <laughs> <laughs> he just, that's what he used to say all the time in life. To be fair, I think the first test match was Cardiff and like everyone went out and like just tried to bang it. And I think because he played well, he was like, well, I can't really tell him to stop now. But then getting bowled out for 100, he was like, right, lads, come into the office. We're going to have to change this. Did he ever buy a drink, TV? T uh, only when Brad Haddon was around. What? Yeah, that's the only time I've seen him at the bar was with Brad Haddon. Did he ever buy you a drink? Uh... He probably got one out of the Heskey at the changing room and said he bought it for me. 